Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Hey wife, did you know that Anchor is sponsoring our show? Really? Don't we use Anchor to distribute our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts? Yeah, and we are on just about every other platform available as well, thanks to them. Why do we use Anchor as our podcasting service? Well, they make editing and distributing our show a breeze. What if one of our listeners wants to start their own podcast? Then they should head over to anchor.fm or download the app to get started. Awesome! You guys should go do that right now! Husband! Wife! Do you remember what happened yesterday? I don't really remember what happened with the Bible. I do remember, mostly because I've got something on my mind, but I remember something that we talked about yesterday, and that was whether or not you should follow the crowd and do what they say or stand up and against the grain and, and fight against what's wrong, right? Um, that was something that you and I yeah, discussed. We, we yeah, we went on at length about that. Yeah. I, I only bring it up because I just saw on Twitter today this guy that is, um, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but hate, They're hate, hate, hate. And he is a Christian pastor, preacher, whatever the fuck he is, don't really give a shit. But he advocated shooting LGBTQIA plus in the back of the head legally. He wants them to be illegal to be that way. And then we prosecute them and shoot them in the back of the head. And uh, I, I've just kind of had it with these fucking assholes that are um, saying things like this and justifying it by the Bible. They're fucking terrorists. They're fucking awful. And I hate them. That's all. Wow. Tell me how you really feel. That's really how I feel. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what happened uh, yesterday in the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yesterday, and I agree with you, obviously, yeah, completely. Obviously. Right. Um, yesterday, David escaped to a cave, and then um, uh, Saul was saying, "Go kill him," and a bunch of the soldiers were like, "But maybe not, though." Right. But then they went ahead and killed a bunch of priests. Yeah, like eighty-five of them, right? Yeah, and, one and then escaped. one escaped, and David's like, "You can hide with me; we'll be friends forever." Right. I'll protect you. Yeah. All right, and that was uh, 1 Samuel chapter 20, 22. 22, and today we are doing... 1 Samuel chapter 23. All right, let's go do this. Okie dokie. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 23. Okay. And this section is called David in the Wilderness, but because you were just railing about... Um, LGBTQ being persecuted by yeah. the church. Yeah. It made me think of um, the musical called um, Be More Chill. Yeah. And the song from it, Michael in the bathroom. And this is David in the wilderness. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Okay. Not at all the same, but that's where my brain went. Yeah. No, so, I mean, I don't get it, but I get it because well, I know you. Yeah. So and that's the only reason. It's based on a book and it's really good. You guys should read it. And um, if you have an opportunity to watch the musical, it's really good. Yeah, what wife said. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry. Okay, so anyway, David is in the wilderness. He's much in the like, wilderness. Much like all of the uh, uh, Israelites were at one time. In the wilderness of Zen, weren't they? Something like that. I think it was. Pretty the sure. Zen, not Zen. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. That. I mean, right? Like Some... Zinfandel, not peace. Sure. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so one day news came to David that the Philistines were at Kyla stealing grain from the threshing floors. Fuckers. God damn it. Why Why are they always stealing that grain from the threshing floor? That's where you're supposed to party. Yeah. And that's where you're supposed to um, Didn't sleep, they talk to Ruth? I mean, somebody, not Ruth. The, sleep at was, the foot of somebody's bed. What was the girl's name? Was it Ruth? It, it was, was Ruth. It was Ruth. Yeah. 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 Or Naomi. Ruth can tell him what threshing floors are for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she can. <laughs> <laughs> David asked the Lord, should I go and attack him? Yes, go and save Kyla. K- Kila. I-, I pronounced it wrong. Whatever okay. the Lord told him. You know, God answers a lot of people with specific things back then. Like, Sometimes. He's like, 
Should I go attack them? Yes. Like, Absolutely. 100%. Go. Do you know what I've, I've I've never heard of God actually talking to someone and telling them what to do? Exactly. Not once. Not once. And if they did, they're probably, you know, not quite okay. Or they made, or they it, made up. it up. Yeah. More likely they made it right. up. Right. Yeah. I always feel the presence of God. Yeah. What does that mean? I, had I a wish friend, I knew. I had a friend tell me that. I feel the presence of God and I feel sorry for you that you don't. And I'm like... I don't really want to talk about it because I don't want to hear your bullshit, but I do want to... What the fuck does that mean? I kind of feel scared for them that they do. Like, what? what is it like to have a presence? What is... Like, I don't I don't get it. What is the... Pre- were you just, like, really happy one day? Because, you know, there's medication that can induce <laughs> that feeling. Is it like when the wind blows? Is that what it is? Everywhere like, maybe? Because the- that happens okay. a lot, the wind blowing. You know what? We went out to dinner tonight, yeah. and I had the most delicious food. It was great. I was really happy. But I wouldn't say I felt the presence of the Lord. What I felt was satiated by delicious food and a great 80s soundtrack in the background. Yeah. And a really nice weight staff and an excellent Mai Tai. Right. Generally, there's a logical explanation as to why things are going good or bad. Yeah. And you can attribute it to things that are happening in your life or not happening in your life. You know, yeah. like that's generally just, how it I was goes. happy. Is that what they mean? I feel the presence of the Lord? No. Bitch, you were happy. You were happy. Well, Unless it was something else. What is it? Tell me. They don't fucking know. We know this because we've talked to enough people at this point that are like, yeah, it's all bullshit. Okay. So it's just, it's bullshit. Okay. Well. Yeah, they're, they're telling themselves that this thing that they're feeling is the Lord, but it's not the Lord. It's just a fucking feeling. It's got to be like above and beyond happy. Or above and beyond sad. Like if God is, you know, um, mad at you, you know, you can, see, you, you can see it the other way too. If you know, it, it's just a matter of how you interpret your life. Basically, I could believe that, you know, the lamp in front of me is, you know, causing me to have bad juju, but you know, it's not. So <laughs> it's just missing a light bulb. Actually, yeah, that's, that's it. That's all. <laughs> but David's men said, mm, we're afraid even here in Judah, we certainly don't want to go to Kyla to fight the whole Philistine fucking army. Yeah, that'd be yeah. I don't blame him. Right. So David asked the Lord again, and again the Lord replied, Go to Kayla, for I will help you conquer the Philistines. Mm, ah, yeah. Okay, okay. So David and his men went to Kayla. That's Kyla. all it took. Just yeah. David talking to God one more time, and he's yeah. like, Guys, God's with us, man. Yeah, we're we're going to go. I'm sorry, but you have to. Right. They slaughtered the Philistines and took all their livestock and rescued the people of Kayla. Well, there you go. God must be real, right? I guess. <laughs> Now, when Abiathar, that was the Heidi guy, uh-huh. yeah. son of Ahimelech, 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 <laughs> fled to David at Kyla, he brought the ephod with him. I'm so the happy ephod. he brought the ephod, yeah. The ephod. Right. Saul, you know, Looney Tunes spear yep. throwing motherfucker, right. yeah. who called his own son a stupid son of a whore, yeah. soon learned that David was at Kyla. Good! He exclaimed, We've got him now! God has handed him over to me, for he has trapped himself in a walled town! Exclamation point! I kind of doubt it. I kind of doubt it. I bet, I bet you're right. I bet he's wrong. I bet you're right. Because there's, there's some David coming up, you know? Right, yeah. So Saul mobilized his entire army to march to Kila and besiege David and his men. But David learned of Saul's plan and told Abiathar, the priest, to bring the ephod and ask the Lord what he should do. Mm-hmm. Then David prayed, Oh, Lord, God of Israel, I have heard that Saul is planning to come and destroy Kyla because I am here. Will the leaders of Kyla betray me to him? And will Saul actually come as I have heard? Oh, Lord, God of Israel, please tell me. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If God is on, you know, David's side, right? And that's mm-hmm. what we're supposed to assume here, right? I guess. Okay. Um, why did he have to find out that they were coming through some other means other than God? Wouldn't God have been like, why? hey, dude. Why didn't God They're just coming, man. tell them, or even better, why didn't God just bowl them down? Right. He could have stopped them. He could have just, like, he made them really tired. And he could have <laughs> turned their heart. He could have turned their heart. But, I mean, yeah. He could have just put some, like, honey in their way, and they just stopped and eat See? the honey. Yeah. You know? And the Lord said, he will come. No. Oh, okay. So Ooh. he's not going to stop them. He's on his way. Again, David asked, will the leaders of Kyla betray me and my men to Saul? Probably. And the Lord replied, yeah, they will betray you. <laughs> Boy, they're going to betray you. We ain't going to make this easy on you. No, Shit, no. man. So David and his men, about 600 of them now, left Kyla and began roaming the countryside. Oh. Roaming. Okay. That doesn't sound very scurryish. That sounds like 
There's mm -hmm. wandering around. We're just going to go this way, and now we're going to go that way. Right. I see right. a path over here. There's a nice bridge with a reflection of flowers yeah. over there. Yeah. yeah. Word soon reached Saul that David had escaped. So he didn't. <laughs> escaped, because, you know, he, he wasn't wandered. like. He wasn't there guarding them. He escaped right. from nobody holding them captive. Yeah. Okay. So he didn't go to Kyla after all. It, he, Saul was like, oh man, he got away. He couldn't have gone, like, okay. I didn't get there fast enough. He but got away. You don't, you uh, you can't track <laughs> an army of, like, 400 people? Apparently not. 600. I would think, six, 600. I'm sorry, 600. You can't track 600 people? Because I would think they would make a mark in the ground where they're, you know, trampling over shit. I that would, would be think, pretty easy to follow. Maybe Especially it's for people so, that are, you know, used to that. Maybe it's so deserty. I just don't buy it. <laughs> I don't. I don't buy it at all. I mean, there's going to be some piss and shit. And yeah, exactly. At the very go least, they're going to toss their, you know, chicken bones down or whatever the hell they got with them. Soda cans and yeah, water bottles. exactly. <laughs> Dorito bags. <laughs> <laughs> David now stayed in the strongholds of the wilderness and in the hill country of Ziph. Saul hunted him day after day, but God didn't let Saul find him. Mm, okay. Oh, okay. So he was hunting them. Okay. Okay. I thought he had just given up. No, he was hunting no, he and he God was, was like, no, go over there. <laughs> right there. Hey, Saul, don't go this way. <laughs> One day near Horesh, David received the news that Saul was on the way to Ziph to search for him and kill him. Mm, okay. You know, Ziph. Yeah, that place. Jonathan, you know, Saul's son, mm -hmm. David's lover. <laughs> right. Went to find David and encouraged him to stay strong in his faith of, in God. So Jonathan was able to find mm -hmm. David, but his dad couldn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't be afraid, Jonathan assured him. My father will never find you. You are going to be the king of Israel, and I will be next to you. Mm. E even though I found you. As my father Saul is well aware. Uh, is he well aware of that? Because he seems like he's trying to stop it with everything he's got. But my daddy knows how much I love you. What does it say that? No. Oh. It just says, I will be next to you as my father, okay. Saul, is well aware. Well, no, I was just checking because, like, the way you said it, it sounded like something like you were reading that. So. No, because I was just being, I was being Jonathan to your argument. Got it. I was like, no, no, my daddy knows how much I love you and I'm going to be right next to you. Got it. Yeah. I'm going right. to be right there with you, man. Yeah. So the two of them mm -hmm, renewed their solemn pact before the Lord. I bet they did. I bet they did. <laughs> then Jonathan returned home while David stayed at Horesh. But okay. now the men of Ziph went to Saul and Gibeah, Gibeah, sorry, and betrayed David to him. Oh. We know where David is hiding, they said. Wow. He is in the strongholds of Horesh on the hill of Hekelah. Which is in the southern part of Jeshimon. Okay. They're sing songs. I would think. Well, I would think that he would know. Like all you gotta do is name the place, right? Yeah. That's not that big of a it, fucking area. The tree. He's gonna know. <laughs> yeah. And when you know specific trees and wells. Yeah. You don't have to name. It's this city and this valley by this yeah. fucking road thing, whatever. And there's a right. rock there. Come down whenever you're ready, O King, and we will catch him and hand him over to you. No, that's what they're saying. Oh, they, and, and I'm reading that. Okay. No, I know. I just. The sing-songy thing. Yeah, because you know. they're like, nanny, nanny, boo, boo, Got we it. found him. Ha, okay. ha, 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 ha. Right. We, we're, we're betraying him. Got it. You know? Yeah. The Lord bless you, Saul said. At last, someone is concerned about me. <laughs> Go and check again to be sure of where he is staying. And wait, 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 wait. You're going to check again instead mm -hmm. of just going. Yeah. Like, you haven't been able to find this dude. You're going to give him more leeway to get lost. Did you ever watch 80s cartoons oh, and yeah. movies? Yeah. What are they renowned for? James Bond movies. What are they renowned Spilling for? Filling out the whole fucking plan before they, yeah. you know, and then giving the person a chance to get away. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they tie them up, and instead of just fucking shooting them, they leave them over a thing of alligators. Well, I guess you know? at least they come by it naturally. It's in yeah. the Bible. It's so, in the Bible. You know. So it's all still going off, okay? Yeah. He's saying, someone's finally concerned about me. Go and check again to be sure of where he's staying and who has seen him there. Yeah. For I know that he is very crafty. That, <laughs> that walking motherfucker who walks. Whenever I hear the word crafty, I think of the Beastie Boys song. That girl is crafty. I can't, I can't think of what That girl is crafty? Yeah, something like that. I can't, I, can't, it's, I don't know. It's in the back of my head right I now. Don't I don't know uh, their lyrics very well. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I can't do Except for intergalactic, justice. planetary, right, planetary, right. intergalactic. <laughs> That's the only one I know. <laughs> Discover his hiding places, Saul continued, and come back when you are sure. Then I'll go with you. And if he is at the area 
And if he is in the area to, at all, I'll track him down, even if I have to search every hiding place in Judah. Yeah. So he's saying, you track him down, and then I'll go track him down. Okay. That's literally what he's saying. Yeah, it seems like a waste of time and energy, mm -hmm. you know? So the men of Ziph returned home ahead of Saul. Meanwhile, okay. David and his men had moved into the wilderness of Maon, <laughs> like mayonnaise, in the Araba Valley, south of Jeshimon. So they moved again. They did. Okay. They did. Yeah. When David heard that Saul and his men were searching for him. They left. He went even farther into the wilderness to the Great Rock. The Great Rock. You know, the Great Rock. Yeah, totally. You know. The Great One. Not the mediocre rock. No, the Great One. Not the Little Rock. Yeah. <laughs> little Rock. <laughs> Not Plymouth Rock. No. Nope. Not Hard Rock. Not Fraggle Rock. Not Fraggle Rock. <laughs> <laughs> The Great Rock. Right. Okay. And he remained there in the wilderness of Mayan. A's. But <laughs> Saul kept after him in the wilderness. Okay. Saul and David were now on opposite sides of a mountain. Oh. Dang. Hello. Do you think they could see oh, each other? Oh. Or are they like circling without being able to see each other? Round and round the Mulberry Mountain. Right. The monkey chased the weasel. The yeah. monkey stopped to pull up his socks. Pop goes the weasel. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just as Saul and his men began to close in on David and his men, an urgent message reached Saul that the Philistines were raiding Israel again. Oh, shit. Aww, Not that. You better They saw home. that you're over there focusing on this. Yeah. And they're like, oh, this is a good time to attack. Yeah, because you're stupid. Right. You're concentrating on this one guy for no fucking reason. Yeah. So Saul quit chasing David. He did not pop the weasel. He returned to fight the Philistines. Damn, he was so close. He was right there on the other side of the fucking mountain, man. Yeah. Ever since that time, the place where David was camped has been called the Rock of Escape. <laughs> the Rock of Escape. There's, there goes that uh, that ingenious naming thing that they have in the Bible again. This is the Rock of Escape. Oh, these are the Rocks of Escape. They are big on rocks, you know? We like love Markers us some rocks. are always rocks and piles of rocks and giant rocks and the great rocks and... You know, there's just so many fucking rocks. Let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get rocked. You'd think that after a while you'd start losing track of all the fucking rocks and be like, which rock are we talking about again? Is it that rock or this rock or the great rock or the fucking stupid rock or which rock is it? Sing another rock song. No. Why? Because I don't want to. You're making me do all the rocks. I, yeah, I... We will, we will rock you, you know? We will, we will rock you. Yeah, that. Remember when our child was little? Yeah, that was the first Google search they ever did. Was the lyrics to, we will, we will rock you. And that is definitely a, our generation thing for our kids. Like, who, like, they used to remember when we first walked when we were younger and, like, when we talked and all that kind of crap. And, and what, what, what do we remember? We remember the first fucking Google search. Yep, yep. It's crazy. Yeah. But you know what? I have to, I have to toot my own horn here just a little bit because... At the time, it was like 2008, maybe, mm -hmm. 2009, and I had our computer hooked up to our TV, and it was like the first Google Chrome. Like, mm -hmm. I was so impressed with myself, and mm -hmm. the kids were pretty impressed, too. They were. They were. Like, wow, computer on TV. Didn't know that was possible, and I'm like, yeah. And then they came out with these little fucking disks here in the last few years, and I'm like, god damn it, showing me up. Yep. I had that invented years ago. Now, how old was our kid when they did the Google search? I would say four, four or five. five, maybe. Yeah. 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 I mean, In pretty young. Like, I didn't even know they could fucking type, so. <laughs> <laughs> and what's really funny is, I mean, how old is that fucking song? And... So in the 2000s, our kid was looking that song up. Yeah, yeah, that was hilarious. great. I love it. Still one of their favorite bands, too. Yeah, yeah. So. So Saul quit chasing David. Oh, yeah, and um, that place where he camped has been called the Rock of Escape. Right. David then went to live in the strongholds of Engedi. the end. Okay, all right. Not so, a lot happening here, just no, a lot just, of running and hiding. Yeah, and then... And betraying the, and... Another rock named... Escaping. Named Rock. Yeah. Yep. So I guess... Uh, that was anticlimactic. David gets to live another day. No spear is going to end up through his gut today, so. That was just so anticlimactic. Yeah, well, you know, you can't have excitement all the way through the Bible. I know. Shit. It's better than those fucking chapters where they were naming all the fucking people you know that were married to this person and had these kids and yada, yada, the yada. The gadipotamus. Fuck. Yeah, it's or true. Or the ark or any of that shit. Yeah, no pomegranates for me. Boring it's true. as fuck. It's true. I will take this. Um, any day. Chase around the mountain. 
and the Great Rock of Escape. At least it's a story. It's true. It's yep. true. You're right. All right, so that was um, 1 Samuel chapter 23. And tomorrow we will be back for 1 Samuel chapter 24. All right, we'll see you guys then. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.